the native thing for the metaverse is the opposite of scarcity you know there's abundance as you can just bring anything and do anything at any time so it'd be an interesting thing to think about like how do you contend with those two things what's my hand placement like like looks great it, it looks look... like you're actually like again just grab the table and then push down yeah Whoa. well not too much otherwise we're Bro, i'm strong you could it's actually some, do pull-ups uh... yeah <laughs> metaverse workouts <laughs> yeah but no unironically you know there could be rock climbing okay cool so uh welcome we've got uh meta factory in our new studio and uh i'm your host this is the meta factory community call first time we're going to be doing a virtual podcast uh yes, sir. we've got meta dreamer and dow friend this is all in a browser so we're in hyperfi io and all they had to do was go to the browser and then hit VR mode. They didn't have to install anything or... But yeah, do y'all see the screen? Do y'all want to kind of chat about what we've been working on? Um, let's let's start out with, I guess, like, what is MetaFactory? Um, it says over here, a decentralized culture factory building the open metaverse. Community-owned brand yes, crafting products and experiences travel seamlessly between digital and physical, so... Physical hey, stuff, yeah. some digital stuff. Metallic modeling for us. Oh, fashion icon. <laughs> yes, sir. The G. So yeah, we are. Uh, I think I'm wearing the the raid guild hoodie and the bankless hat. Um, or sorry, yes, the bankless uh, beanie hat thing. Um, and yeah, that's kind of you know digital to physical. We have all our wearables like. Oh, really just finishing that. on that's probably on the polishing all the experience off you're wearing this hat well oh, there it is there you go so yeah it's cool to see like a lot of this tech is coming to into place now like that we have like hyperfire for example like being a more crypto native web xr platform um it's really cool to be able to like bring all this stuff in here and what do you think yeah, of think... Uh, the name web 3 xr Mm. Too much? Yeah. Web XR3. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting to think of like how you'd label, you know, that sort of thing, like Web3 native XR stuff. Yeah, I think Web3 has gotten in a little bit of a um, stint. I was just wondering, did you do something to your mic? Because you sound more robotic. I mean, I, that could Me? be considered a uh, benefit. Yeah, it just sounds more... Feature, not a bug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't do anything, but it did it for me. I'm sorry um, talking about Manifactory, man. It happens. It just comes yeah. with the uh, being a robot. I think Web3XR could work. Um, it's a pretty interesting, like, Web3, like, seems to have, like, stuck, you know? it's not like the perfect term but it seems to like i don't know what other better term we have for the general ecosystem than that um because like it's bigger than just like crypto per se if like, crypto means cryptocurrency or cryptography web could work yeah it's what we got right now so i mean um, yeah. but I, I i do love the principles and foundations of building on the web and when people talk about the uh, open metaverse i think a lot of the principles and tech that it you know the web is kind of like the glue um there's a lot of yeah. stuff that's not even like web native that uses web in the background uh hmm. you know under the hood it's cool to see too that like um like the performance and like developer experience of all this stuff is getting a lot better like if you wanted to build a web xr experience like hyperfi like five years ago it would have been much harder you need a lot more like custom code a lot more engineering effort but with things like react 3 fiber and like you know a lot of these tooling is becoming more friendly to use and commoditized so that just allows the innovation to get more higher level where it's not just like trying to innovate on like the libraries and the like infrastructure it's more so like we're, we're i think we're just starting to be able to innovate on the actual experiences like this is this is one example you know like even a year ago it wasn't really possible for us to do this in a meaningful way um, I remember we've like tried in the past with VR chat and stuff and it's just like a lot of hoops to jump through um, and VR chat itself being not like a crypto native or crypto friendly platform. So 
um yeah i'm pretty excited i think like the i think the next kind of major step will be like once we can have like ai generated like optimized assets and you know that will just make the process of building these worlds much easier where you can just like go straight from like text to world um type of experience or even right now you know if we wanted to like design something in 3d here we could just use like a text generative model um indeed yeah and bring out stuff even if a wet so like the beauty of the web is that let's say there's a website that does that we could just take the results and drag and drop uh them directly into here yeah exactly um and then yeah i think like in terms of we talk about open metaverse on the home page is there a place um, that uh we could find 3d assets that we could drag in let me see i mean i could always like just uh drag something in for my hard drive yeah do it pizza uh, i want a pizza all right let me find a pizza oh, forgot then. to eat again let's bring in some what pizza bring in some blunts okay. blunts and zaz blunts and zaz so here's a pizza slice 3k i think we need a full pizza yeah, yeah right. always. <laughs> we, we're not sharing one slice there you go, I like that one on the left. Oh, this one costs. We don't need the box. Here we go. Let's do this one. Low poly, beautiful. Oh. Yeah, that's a it's pretty interesting too. I've been like talking to some designers recently and like a new kind of design trend for twenty twenty three is like low poly design. Just cause like you know, cause it doesn't necessarily if something's like really like high poly and you know very high fidelity doesn't necessarily mean it looks good and just because something's low poly doesn't necessarily mean it looks bad i think like nintendo's a good example where they run on like you know two generation old hardware and graphics but the games still look pretty amazing um and i think like being able to use like low poly as a design constraint and making things like look cool within that um is going to be like the move for the next few years at least you know until hardware catches up so um i think yeah it's like we should kind of embrace the limitations of the hardware we have right now then rather than trying yeah, to like sure. that's elder ring elder ring wasn't like whoa didn't is this the pizza? Whoa. oh my god Damn, bro this is the some pizza's the size pizza. of the... <laughs> yeah it's exactly the kind of pizza size i need right now yeah great looks delicious it's it's another benefit of the metaverse is you know hygiene doesn't matter you just put the pizza straight on straight on the table you know raw dog it it doesn't even matter if it falls oh. floor. Oh, pizza a piece let's go oh, yeah that's another benefit yes, is that we could just copy paste yeah all right oh. Um, oh, we that's actually like an interesting record. thing too with like crypto and like nfts and stuff the name of the game is scarcity but in the metaverse you know scarcity is like you kind of have to just like force it it's not really like the native thing for the metaverse is the opposite of scarcity you know there's abundance is you can just bring anything and do anything at any time so it'd be an interesting thing to think about like how do you contend with those two things like you know on one hand it's nice that you can start to introduce scarcity but at the other hand it's like some of the coolest stuff happens when there's a lack of scarcity, you know. Um, yeah, I agree. Because just because something is I scarce like doesn't make cool. You know, there, yeah. and there's so much nuance to it, right? There's like, uh, not every NFT is trying to be scarce in terms of accessibility. You know, it's maybe just the first edition of such, but everyone can have a copy, like the CCO ones out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's like a sci-fi replicator like your ooh. matter generator it's just like make me a pizza a ding like the ultimate 3d printer yeah yeah and this is the place where you know we could brainstorm but i think of metafactory as like a kinetic dao where we can coordinate uh in a decentralized online way and it can have kinetic effects in a real world such as the production of physical goods mm yeah i think that's like i'm really excited to see like more interesting stuff happen in the ar space i feel like ar 
is like a much better bridge to like the metaverse than most other things because well, we can prototype like, it right here i could uh drag and drop a real world 3d scan and then we could prototype what uh you know with the same technology that ar works as but using vr yeah. as the test ground and usually that's that'd be really useful because not everyone has like the ultimate backyard <laughs> or city to create interesting yeah. experiences you know and field test yeah. with yeah and it's interesting to think too like if you like just take the average person and they ask you like what can i really do in xr you know mostly it's just kind of like experimentation or like some sort of promotional brand gimmicks like with snapchat and the super bowl they had like the ar experience where you see like the winning team you know celebrating uh, coming out of the thing and um it's like i'm really wondering what will be that use case that will actually like you know deliver a lot of value to people's lives that they'll want to you know frequently use this thing um because right. right now it's more so i think a novelty slash like you know early adopter things that are interesting and stuff so you know like, like social is years indeed yeah yeah exactly and you know social is interesting too but i think like that's still going to be somewhat of a niche people where like where they want to like socialize in you know 3d space um i think like if you look at you know i'm trying to think of in those industrial applications of xr and vr that's get used you know like in medicine and engineering and things like that um so like what is the middle ground between those like hyper practical industrial use cases and like a consumer sort of thing um yeah, like education I think, like, training yeah potentially um i think like i'm really interested to see how like the stuff with psvr goes because i think it's like a pretty it's like a you know um flagship level vr experience at like you know around like 11 or 1200 dollars with for like the console and headset like everything you need to get going so i don't think there's been like that level of experience at that level of accessibility you know um thus far outside of like quest and stuff but quest i think you know it's still a bit different i think psvr will be able to just from like what i've seen on the like games are developing and like the you know ip that people are familiar with and things like that just getting that much more polished experience will likely pull a lot more people into that world so um maybe like you know gaming might be the the main thing still to to drive it forward but um especially for straight vr yeah. there's definitely there's benefits to having like um i know like with anything more open source and going more pc and like um mm. these headsets like you there, there's benefits to like having a playstation be bundled exactly like you said it, it sometimes the not having those restraints and having to be more open it's a hotbed for being able to experiment and develop different things but yeah for really like pushing the envelope for a particular use case like just gaming experiences in general because it's kind of hit yeah. a little bit of a bottleneck where it hasn't really advanced and gone on too much like i think it'll absolutely benefit just from a vr gaming perspective to have yeah something like psvr too we, yeah. i want one we do some field trips when when it's out you know i think that um, mm -hmm. developers and be just, sweet. in general there's too much in my opinion um you know, like F Denver is coming up and then NFT NYC. What is the big metaverse conference everyone's looking forward to? Like where are the field trips of connecting with all these uh, builders? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, wh where are we connecting uh, to kind of see the overall landscape? Um, I think yeah. that we should have something that's more native that also anons could be speakers uh give presentations mm -hmm. at you know yeah i guess like v siloed vkit's a great example and that's what we're inspired to do um with the neon biddle uh which meets up every week on friday we're gonna be uh building a world with all the boots and the templates mm -hmm. that we made so mm -hmm. look out for that we, we're gonna we're gonna do this metaverse conference idea, um, and then yeah. 
it'll be kind of the dry run for something bigger down the road, I think, later this year, perhaps, because these things can yeah. come really quickly together once you have the assets. Yeah, for sure. I think, like, another interesting use case that comes up is, like, the whole network state idea where you have, like, a digital, you know, country that first starts, you know, designing its society in the digital space and then eventually, you know, manifests it in the real world. Um, and, you know, you could imagine even once it's manifested in the real world, there's a lot of practical and useful applications of XR there where people could, you know, you could have a digital twin of the physical space in XR where people in the physical space with AR headsets can see everyone who's in the digital space and vice versa um, as, you know, kind of like a telepresence type experience. Um, and, you know, the, the reason they might do that is for like, you know, again, probably like meetings and, you know, kind of like being like a social town square type things. So people can like hop in and out and like have these kind of experiences. So, you know, I'm thinking like something like casual, like this is what I like about AR is that you could have a casual type experience where, you know, remember in like RuneScape, you'd be like wood cutting or something, or just like <laughs> you'd go to RuneScape, not necessarily to play the game, but just for like social experiences of like, yeah, you're grinding out, you know, whatever wood cutting or mining or something, but then you're just like chatting with other people around it. So in a similar way with like, you know, if you look at like the Quest Pro and stuff, they're kind of like hinting towards that where you can use it and you have like your desktop and you like you have all your normal work happening, but at the same time you can be around other people and in a more social setting yep. um, while still remote. So I think like that stuff like has the potential to catch on in terms of like, you know, delivering actual value to people. Um, but it's, yeah, I think it's, it's hard to like really say, I don't think it, that alone will be enough to be like a killer app for like mainstream adoption per se. Um, I think the software yeah, is yeah. gonna need to drive it. But when you mentioned yeah. the network state, I think if worlds could come with a prefab of loading in perhaps geographic data so you could start yeah. maybe like imagine google earth was super moddable and you could just load up anywhere and then use that as the meeting spot or where you want to start mm. your build then that would incentivize a lot of people you could storytell from there and you could previs the future from there yeah definitely um yeah, I think like in terms of like software and like user experiences and stuff like Apple, for example, is rumored to like announce their headset or XR headset sometime later this year. So, you know, usually for like the general consumer, that's like a signal that, you know, will like drive a lot more adoption. Um, so I'm wondering like how they're going to position it because like they're not really like they don't have a huge gaming focus so um i don't think gaming would necessarily make sense um they have like they have done a lot of investment in like ar stuff and you know a lot of their tooling for AR stuff is pretty cool so i'm guessing it's still going to be oriented towards people building like you know creators and stuff in xr where you know they have for example their like room scan api where like your iphone with your lidar scanner can just like scan your room and then you can instantly turn that into a, like a world like an AR world where now people can like come into your room and you know join that so I think if it's a really polished nice software experience people will just like pop on a headset and you've like scanned your room and you don't need to hire any up. like 3D, so 3D designers right here? So which one on the screen yeah yeah exactly so you know um with things like this you can tell like their focus is on not necessarily like pure metaverse stuff but like bridging these xr experiences with the real world where you know just anyone with an iphone can scan their room Oops. without needing to hire a 3d designer they can have a space to like you know invite other people in and have some like so, so, sort of social experiences or whatnot um and then also like their object scan api uh if you want to like google that too um, it's basically you just take a video of any like physical object and then generates like a highly optimized um, like USDZ file of that object that you can place in the world. So, you know, you use the room scan API to get the whole layout of the space and then you go around scanning each individual object and then you place it in the space and then, you know, the average person 
then is now able to like essentially create a digital twin of their physical space. So you got you know, uh, one of the latest iPhones, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be great. You know, if you were to try out scanning and then we uh, we bring some of the objects that you scan into here. That'd I'm be great bring test. you my toilet. Yeah, definitely. This is so. Um, I just like I'm basically like two weeks and or like two weeks left to finishing up my basement studio. And I've I just today I took like a full scan of the space just without any furniture or anything to like get that blank slate you know thing and then once i start bringing in all my stuff we Excellent. can definitely yes. create a Doodle digital twin and then yeah and then the cool thing is is like you know right now for example if like we have we want to bring real world people into this space like the environment is 3d and we kind of like green screen them into a screen or something but once you scan the physical spaces you can start to do really interesting things where the main sort of video feed is actually of the physical space but then there's avatars running around in that physical space you know kind of like more ar so it's like instead of like the real world people being embedded in the vr world it's like the vr people being embedded in the real world um and that i think could be like a pretty interesting you know format where imagine like a joe rogan podcast where it's the same familiar studio setup and like the real world like video feed that people are used to but now in like the the seat there's this like a virtual character instead so I think that is kind of uh you know that that solves some like the graphics issues too and a lot of things where you know you're not necessarily uh you don't necessarily have to be fully in a 3d virtual world um indeed yeah that that's that's gonna be exciting um i've got a bunch yeah. of 3d scans that we could do uh, a podcast through one day where the studio becomes more so dynamic that was the kind of idea here you know we're kind of in this uh i could just kind of zoom out but we're in this kind of like this was kind of called a space uh studio because how we could just change the world around us really easily and it was kind of all self-contained into uh one spot but you know i could have something set up where we could just bring in new environments on the fly and what i did before actually was um i would kind of just drag and drop stuff and kind of put it uh beneath us so if i do this right um sorry for the lag spike all right oh, gee. <laughs> Do y'all see something in the distance there? Um, I'm still lagged, I think. Oh, yeah, I see a little crypto voxel city. Yeah. Oh, okay. now we're in there. Now, if I put it below <laughs> us, then it's kind of like we're flying above That's right. That's mm. dope. Very cool. Yeah. And we could kind of like talk about different things there. and You could like shrink it and bring it onto the table too, right? Uh, upcoming announcement on the XR front. Are they going full VR or are they going to do more of an AR like on the peripheral side? Because I know the yeah. lens or whatever, like their, their original wearable got set back. Yeah, I think like they're probably going to be more focused on AR stuff, like AR pass through. Um, so kind of right. like Quest Pro type situation. I think like pass-through AR is probably going to be the meta for a while. Like, I, I think we're at least minimum like Earth. five, ten years away from like actual like uh, AR glasses type experience because there's just so many problems with like you know transparency and having like enough brightness and all these different things right. um, that you can't really do. So, uh, but you know the the. The nice part is, is like they can wait for the hardware to catch up, but they have a pretty good foundation for the software side where, you know, you have like with the LiDAR sensor, you can do like occlusion pretty nicely. So you could have like the virtual objects, you know, behind physical real world objects instead of, and you know, the shadows and the lighting estimation, like all that is like pretty solid. So I think like having that like overall polished experience where, you know, it'll just be a lot more friendly to like the average person and you know it would feel like more immersive and i think like one of the biggest things is not even the visual graphics but the the audio 
um, if you look at, you know, they've put so much like time and investment into spatial audio and transparency mode with AirPods and stuff. So that's right. like the exact right technology that you need to like have the virtual objects around you in the physical space sound like they're actually in the physical space. So, you know, coming like directionality is one thing, but also seamlessly blending in the sounds of the real world with the sounds in the metaverse, you know, um, it, it can't just sound like everyone's like a like a Discord voice chat, you know, uh, where you just hear everyone at the same volume and stuff. So, um, and even like the acoustics of the room, right? Like if you're in a small room, what it sounds like versus if you're in like a large stadium or something, it's all gonna sound different. So, you know, the audio, I'd say like the audio is probably even more important than the video. You know, if you have like a 4K, like high definition movie, but you can't hear anything, it's a pretty trash experience, but you can watch a movie at like 300, 360p. If the audio is good, you can still like, you know, get a solid experience um, that way. Right. So, um, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Didn't think of the audio angle and all the applications there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it'll be really like consumer ready device, at least in this first one, just cause like the whole space it's still like, you know, the tools are just barely getting good enough for creators. So it's going to take a while. So I imagine it's like a pro level thing, probably priced like above a grand, um, meant for like creators and developers and stuff. But yeah, I I'm curious. It'll, f I imagine it'll probably be standalone just cause they have pretty efficient chips. So they could probably get away with like good experience as a standalone headset. Um, yeah. We're at the like. hour, so uh, I just wanted to say, you know, uh, uh, if we could stand over by the green screen over there and get a few shots, that would be cool. So let's make our way from the studio, come over here. I'm going to duplicate it so we have a little bit more space over here. Stool, okay. If you want, I could even give you a podium so you look... Uh, Presidential? Yes. You I get a podium? Cool. Hell yeah. All right. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go.